Well, that's the last of it, I said, breathing a sigh and collapsing on the couch. I'm officially toast. I just finished hauling the last couple of boxes into the house from the moving truck. Stacks of them were piled throughout the living room, making a corrugated fortress around me. Unpacking would be another long adventure, but at last we had finally gotten all our belongings into the farmhouse, so that we could begin the process of starting our new life. As I lay on the couch relaxing momentarily, the hairs began to stand up on the back of my neck. I started to get a strong sense that I was being watched, specifically from the door beneath the stairs leading to the basement. It creaked open slowly, just to crack as I observed it back. I closed my eyes, ignoring the feeling. There was no one else in the house except for us. Therefore, nobody was watching me. It was just my imagination. Yet still, every time I turned away, I felt a tingling sensation and saw a vague shadow in that direction, just barely visible in my peripherals. There was also a feeling of a presence that I could not ignore. The door to the basement yawned open wider as if inviting me in. Darkness peered out, blacker than a midnight graveyard. Standing up on shaking legs, I began to walk over to the door, thinking a draft from the basement was blowing it open. I didn't like the feeling of it being a jar. Don't ask me why, but I just didn't like it. As I drew closer, the sensation of eyes watching me became ever more powerful, as if I was drawing closer to a predator and my body was telling me to turn away and run. The darkness was too much for me to look at, so I turned my eyes away briefly, but it made the feeling even worse. I couldn't help thinking that if something jumped out from the doorway, I wouldn't see it until it was too late. So I looked back again, forcing myself to focus my attention on the area blackness. When I returned my gaze to the doorway, I could have sworn as her eyes looking at me from the direction for a brief instant. So quickly it could have been passed off as a trick of the light but it made my heart skip a beat nonetheless. I slammed the door shut so hard it shook the house and my wife yelled at me to be more gentle with old Blaze. Heading into the kitchen, my heart was thumping in my chest and I told Christine what had happened. What do you mean you saw ice down there? There was somebody in the basement? We need to call the cops. Hang on, hang on. I was trying to decide if my overtired brain had imagined it. I thought I'd seen something, but the more I considered it, the less likely it seemed. It could have been my eyes playing tricks on me. I grab a flashlight and take a look. No, you can't, it's too dangerous. The place was locked up, right, so it couldn't have been a person down there. I was probably imagining things, but I'll take a look just to be safe. Are you sure about this? Maybe we should call the police and have them check it out. It will take them an hour just to get here. We are not in the city anymore, remember? Besides, there's no way anybody could have gotten in here since the owners left. Not unless they had a key. Just let me take a look, okay? Christine reluctantly agreed and took out her phone, dialing 911 and getting ready to hit send in case anything happened. I found a flashlight in one of the boxes marked camping and opened the basement door. Taking a deep, shuddering breath, I began to descend. Proceeding down the rickety steps, the beam of light showed multitudes of dust motes and particles floating in the air, being kicked up by my movements. Ancient wooden stairs creaked beneath my feet with each step I took, going down and down deeper beneath the ground. As I did, that feeling returned again. That sensation of something watching me. That unpleasant feeling began to grow and blossom into the worst fear I'd ever experienced in my life as I set my foot down onto the dirt-packed floor of the lower level. The old farmhouse had an ancient relic of a basement, I realized, 
Since we had moved from a long ways away, we hadn't seen the place in person. This was the first time I'd been down here. The owners had chosen not to include pictures of the basement in their ad, and I was beginning to understand why. Shining my light around as on our old pieces of ladder and ragged strips of wire, rope and twig hanging from the ceiling's cross beams. Crude wooden crosses assembled from broken sticks and small locks hung suspended from these, turning and swaying gently despite the lack of breeze down in the basement. I felt a presence behind me suddenly and spun around the air turning ice cold. For a moment I saw that I saw a dark shadow shape similar to a person, but there was no one standing there. Every part of me wanted to get out of there, but I knew I had to make sure the basement was empty. I shone my flashlight into every corner and every hidden space, making sure it was unoccupied. Surely enough, it was. But I did find something. There was a black box in a stone alcove, surrounded by inscriptions carved directly into the foundations of the house. The strange shrine resembled something from a church or a temple, but it appeared darker somehow. Evil. A chill ran through my bones which seemed to emanate from the stone. Unlit candles and strange black statues surrounded a box sitting dead center the focal piece of this creepy, unholy altar. I don't remember taking the box upstairs with me, but nonetheless I found myself back on the main level holding it in my hands. It looked curious and ancient. The feeling of someone watching remained accompanied by an odd chill which ran through my bones, almost like the temperature in the house had gone down by 10 degrees. There's nobody down there, I told Christine who was waiting for me at the top of the stairs. But I found this weird box and all those crosses were hanging from the ceiling. Track repeat. You need to get rid of that thing, she said holding up her hands to cover her eyes from me looking at it. I hate it. There's something wrong with it. Really? What do you want me to do with it? I asked. It is just some old box, probably someone's keepsake. I don't care. Put it outside and send it away with the trash on pickup day. Just get rid of it. Christine never acted that way. She didn't believe in superstition or curses. She was a self-proclaimed atheist, in fact. By the way she was acting was enough to convince me she was serious. So I didn't argue. Okay, I'll put it outside, I said. I brought it out with me in the front yard and tried to decide where to put it. I settled on leaving it in the back of the moving truck. In the glow of the lights inside the back of the moving van, I took a moment to take a closer look at the box. It was ice cold to the touch, I realized. The surface of it was slick and black like polished marble, but when I took my hand away it smudged off like charcoal. There were shark symbols carved into it and the lock held a shut at the front. I found myself trying to open it but was unable to. Distantly I heard something whispering to me, its voice insistent and raspy, but I dismissed it as just the wind and nothing more. Eventually I gave up on the box's lock and went inside. My wife looked startled when I walked into the front door. What were you doing out there? I thought you'd gone to bed. You were out there with a creepy box for over an hour. N no. I started to disagree with her, but then looked at my watch and realized she was right. Unsure what to say, I told her I was tired and must have zoned out. I needed to get some sleep. Trudging up the stairs to the bedroom, I collapsed on the unmade mattress and drifted off into a deep slumber. As I slept, my dreams were filled with the dark feeling of being observed, as if eyes were watching me closely from the corner of the bedroom in the shadows. When I awoke, it was still dark outside. 
I looked around the pitch black room feeling uneasy and I saw unfamiliar shapes and shadows I didn't recognize. That sensation of being watched had returned tenfold and I felt a presence observing me from the corner where man-shaped shadows stood. Running over to the door I went to turn on the light switch. I flicked it to the on position but the light didn't turn on, the room remaining stubbornly dark. My heart was pounding as I felt the presence staring at me in the room. I wanted more than anything to turn on the lights but they wouldn't go on. For some reason I found myself going back to bed instead of fleeing the room terrified as I was. I found myself lying back down in bed, tucking myself back under the covers and staring at the thing in the corner as it watched me. That dark unrecognizable shape in the corner of the bedroom began to move towards me. The shadow shape of a person reaching out for me, coming for me. I tried to move but found myself paralyzed and unable. I tried to scream but couldn't. I woke up panting, covered in cold sweat and realized I had dreamt the whole thing. The shape in the corner of the room had revealed itself in the morning light and I saw it was in fact a stack of boxes with coats strapped over top of it. It was barely sunrise outside and Christine was in bed next to me. She bolted upright looking startled and asked what had happened. I had a horrible dream. It felt so real. You know those waking nightmares? When you feel as if you're up and walking around after being asleep, only to realize you were out the whole time? My wife didn't answer. Her eyes were fixed on something across the room. She was looking at the dresser and her jaw was hanging down. What is that thing doing in here? I told you to get rid of it and you brought it up here and opened it instead. She was pointing at something and I followed her gaze to see the black box from the basement was on the bureau. It was open, but I had no memory of doing that. What the hell? I didn't do that. And I definitely didn't open it. Did I? You're telling me you don't remember bringing that box in here and opening it? No, it was locked and I couldn't have opened it. Just get it out of here. I don't want to look at it no more, okay? Bring it to the dump or something. Just get it out of the house and far away from here. I went over to the dresser and saw the open box was filled with strange items. A lock of hair, a charred piece of clothing, a cross and other burnt pieces. There was a powerful odor coming from it as well, unlike anything I'd ever come across. The stench was unpleasant and burned my nostrils as I drew closer. This is impossible. I know I didn't bring this in here. It's cursed or something. Just get it out of the house, please. My wife was more upset than I'd ever seen her, so I put on my clothes and took the box out of the car with me. I don't know where the local dump was exactly, but I figured I would go look for it. As I neared the town I saw an antique shop at the side of the road and pulled over on a whim. I wondered if the owner would be interested in taking the box off my hands, or if he could at least tell me what it was. The bell above the door rang as I entered, and a man came out from the back room, polishing a brass candelabra with a rack. Good morning, he said in a friendly voice. How can I help you? He stopped speaking abruptly when he saw what was in my hands. The candelabra fell to the floor with a loud clang and he began to visibly shake as he raised his finger to point at a box. Do you recognize this? I asked. Where did you find that thing? We just moved in up the road, my wife and I. It was in the basement of the old farmhouse up the street. I moved towards him with my hand out to shake his hand and saw that my fingers were smudged black with the box darkness. He backed away slamming into the wall behind him and sending a framed photo crashing to the floor, the glass shattering loudly. 
Don't touch me. Don't touch anything. Just get out. Get out and put that thing back where you found it. If you do anything else with it, you will never get your life back. You should have never taken it from its resting place. You should have never come here. I backed away from him, terrified even more than before, especially now that I knew others were aware of the dark powers this box contained. Whatever it was, it was not meant to be moved. Its resting place was of extreme importance. Maybe that was why the house had been so cheap. It came with a cursed basement. The man began to throw things at me, shouting in a foreign language I didn't recognize then speaking harshly in English, telling me to leave and never come back. He spoke in braille-like incantations and made the sign of the cross so and over again. I stumbled out to my car and started the engine, driving back towards the farmhouse, wishing we'd never purchased the place. When I pulled up outside the farmhouse, I tried to decide what to say to my wife. How would I explain to her that a box couldn't be moved? Maybe if we just left it in the basement, the present would leave us alone. I decided I would just try to sneak in and put it back in the basement without her noticing. I would explain it to her later, or at least try to. The important thing now seemed to return it to its proper place before something really terrible happened. The light was off in the bedroom, so I assumed Christine would still be up there. I went to the basement door and opened it gently, being careful not to make too much noise in case Christine had gone back to sleep again upstairs. I began heading down into the darkness beneath the house. I was holding the box carefully in my hand like a live bomb, since I wasn't sure what would happen if I dropped it or did anything wrong. Each creaking stair made my heart hammer faster as I trod down towards the dirt floor of the basement. Finally, I set foot down there and looked around, seeing only shadows. The light from upstairs was dim and it was the only source I had to see by. My phone was in my pocket and I kept it there, thinking I would only be down here for a few moments. Walking across the blackened space towards the alcove which had housed the black box, I began to feel watched again. It was only then I noticed that sensation had been gone for a while, as I drove to the antique store and back again. Whatever had been within the box watching me, it had not stayed inside after the thing had opened. It had stayed in the house with my wife. A loud bang came from the top of the stairs and the entire basement went completely pitch black in an instant. I realized the door had slammed shut and I figured Christine had closed it. Maybe she didn't realize I was home. I began to fumble for the cell phone in my pocket, needing a bit of light to feel safe down in this terrifying basement. But before I could grab it, something attacked me. The shrieking wail it made was inhumane and full of rage. It swiped at me with sharp claws in the darkness as I rolled and ducked away from it, trying to escape. I threw the box down to the floor, hoping to get away. As I got up, I hit my head on a dangling wooden cross and nearly got wrapped up in the twine which suspended it from the ceiling. Stumbling, I tried to find my way to the stairs, screaming for my wife to help me. She didn't answer. A moment later, the thing came at me again. It was fast but thin and just a bit weaker than me despite its anger. I managed to grab its wrists and pushed it up against the wall, then tripped it to the floor. I ran up the stairs, stumbling on the steps and scraping my shins bloodying them badly. Just as I reached the top, the thing came at me again. It was relentless, screaming ancient curses with spittle flying in my face. It swiped at my eyes and got one of them blinding me. The door was just behind me, so I flung it open and shoved the thing away from me. 
and as the light from the main level came flooding in through the open door, I saw what had been attacking me. My wife tumbled down the steps, cracking her head against the wall on the way down, then falling lifelessly to the dirt floor of the basement below. I took a few shaky steps down the stairs, looking to confirm if my eyes had deceived me, but they had not. The thing in the box had stayed behind when I left, and it had possessed my wife, driving her down into the darkness of its lair. We had felt most at home. As I stood there staring at a lifeless body as I began to twitch, her fingers began to drum up and down. Then her head began to rock and make a loud smacking sound as her forehead impacted the basement floor again and again, hard. Christine, I called out down the stairs. Stop, stop, please. She continued the self-destructed behavior, smashing her skull hard against the dirt floor. I began to take a shaky step down to stop her, but then hesitated. That thing was still inside of her. It wasn't safe, and yet I couldn't let her just keep hurting herself like that. The meaty sound repeated again and again as I screamed for her to stop, but she wouldn't. But I wouldn't go down there again, and eventually the thing inside of her realized that. Come and save me, honey, she said in a droning beehive voice. I need you. No. I just stood at the top of the stairs waiting. My wife appeared to have broken a few limbs during her fall, but I didn't stop her from moving quickly. Sickening sound of bone crunching could be heard from up the stairs as she got to her feet, her one ankle failing so that she rested her weight on the splintered knob of her tibia rather than on her foot. Whatever was inside of her felt no pain, but it looked agonizing to me. She began to shuffle up the wooden stairs without warning, moving faster than I thought possible, crap like an inhumane on four legs. It looked like she wouldn't be able to make it on her fractured bones, and yet she moved like a relentless insect, her other limbs making up for the deficits of the lost one. Using her arms like additional legs, she began to crawl towards me up the stairs, her fingernails digging into the splintered wooden stairs and breaking off as she raced faster and faster, gaining momentum. I realized at the last second that I'd been paralyzed with terror and threw the door shut, just as she slammed into it with a shuddering bang that rattled the upstairs windows in their frames. There was no lock on the door and I could do nothing except hold it closed with all the weight of my body. She doesn't relent for a second, turning the doorknob constantly, pressing with all of her strength against the door as I grit my teeth and fight against her weight. I'm sitting here still with my back pressed up against the door, my feet wedged against the opposing wall with all the force I can muster. When I finish typing this out, I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll try the police and see what they say. My biggest concern is that they'll want to let her out. She'll probably pretend to be normal when they arrive. She'll pretend I'm insane, that I attacked her. But I know it's not her. It's the thing from the basement. The thing from the black box. Whatever it is, she can't be allowed to bring it back to the surface. It was locked down in that basement for a reason, and that's where it needs to stay.